So I'm just going to be listening. If you'll just um, take some uh, regular breaths with your mouth kind of open while I listen, okay? I'm just going to lift up your bra. I'm going to lift this side up as well. Now I'm going to be checking your breath sounds going down in your uh, sides, okay? So if you'll just kind of lift your arm for me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Okay, now I'm just going to check them on your back, all right? All right, next I just want to check out your heart sounds. So if you want to just lean back and relax for me. Okay, so I'm going to be checking your aortic. Pulmonic. Tricuspid. and mitral. Anything like that, I'm going to check your carotid, palpita. All right. All right, um, carotid's equal bilaterally, and I rate them as a two plus because they're not weak or bounding. I'm just gonna auscultate them for sense of breathe. With my bell, um, can you breathe in for me and then exhale and hold your breath. Um, no signs of whooshing or swishing, which means there's no breeze present. I'm going to move on to your heart. Um, I'm going to check the aortic area at the second intercostal space to the right of the sternum. Okay. And the pulmonic to the left of the sternum, second intercostal space. S2 is louder up here. I'm going to check the herbs to the left sternal border at the third intercostal space. All right, can you just place your breast for me? And the tricuspid at about the fourth or fifth intercostal space left of the sternum. And the mitral, which is mid, mid clavicular line, 
head up for their six and across the space. Um, S1 is heard louder down here, and I would stay here for 60 seconds and listen for the apical pulse. Um, then I would go back up with my bell in the same way I came down. Um, no signs of um, abnormal murmurs, no S3 or S4 sounds. So that's good. Now I'm going to listen to your lungs. Every time my stethoscope touches you, can you uh, take a breath for me? Yep. All right, I'm going to start the first thing across the street. No adventitious wheezing or crackling on the front. I'm just going to check the back. Can you turn a little bit for me? I see you have two piercings down here at the bottom. Have there been any pain with them? Nope. No? Nope. All right. No signs of infection, inflammation, or anything like that. All right. I'm going to check your breath sounds back here. Just every time my stethoscope touches you again, can you take a breath? Yep. All right. You can breathe normal. All right, no adventitious sounds on the back as well. Um, I heard no crackling. Hey, you like your hair? Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you take a deep breath for me? Thank you. I'm going to listen to your heart. Okay. All right. I'm going to lift your shirt up. Is that fine? Now, when I place this, I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath, okay? Every time I place it, take a deep breath, and I'm going to move it just repeat the same thing, okay? Can you sit up for me? Now I'm going to listen to your back. Deep breath.
first I'm going to ask you actually to say, just let me feel for some thrills and heaves. Okay. Just normal breathing. I'm going to listen to some of the, with the bell of the stethoscope, I would be listening to the temporal and the upper artery. Okay, now I'm going to listen to your heart. It should be the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid. I would have to just go in and listen and breathe. Okay. Good. Very good. Heart sounds good. Now I'm just gonna just check for some swelling in your extremities. If I could just take a look at your arms. Okay, looks good. Just, if you could just dangle your legs. I'm just going to feel for any kind of swelling, look for swelling, any edema, any pitting, which would indicate swelling. And it looks good. And now I'm going to feel for your pulses, okay? Mm -hmm. First, I'm going to feel for carotid. Just keep your head still. Okay. Okay. And now the brachial. And then I'm gonna ask you to lay down so I could feel for the femoral. Okay. Okay, and then on this side. Okay, and then the deal. Okay. Okay. And then on this foot. Okay. Very good. And now I'm going to move into checking your lungs. So I'm gonna ask you to sit up for me. I'm just gonna take a look at your chest and your back. And then I'm gonna ask you to raise your arms for me so I can look on the sides. Very good. Good. And then now I'm gonna ask you to say 99 again because I'm just feeling for the vibrations. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Good. And now I'm going to listen. Just breathe normal.
Okay, if you could raise your arms for me, just so I can listen. Okay, and on the other side. Yeah, oh, you can put your arms on the outside. Okay, good. I'm just gonna ask you to also, one more time, I'm just checking for um, vibrations again. If you could just say 99. 99. 99. 99. 99, 99, 99, 99. Good. Here to clavicle. One, two, three, four, and I'm gonna come up underneath here, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Four, and five, I'm gonna pull up just a little bit here, mm -hmm. right about mid clavicular line. And I can feel her apical pulse, but I'm gonna have you um, turn on your left. Yep, yeah, come on over. And sometimes I can feel it a little bit better here. Good, so her point of maximal impulse is at the, um, go ahead and lay back, is at the fifth intercostal space, um, mid clavicular line. Now I'm also gonna feel some other borders as well, so. Um, in the meantime, I'm noting that her ribs are not prominent and her breathing is normal. I'm gonna come right through here appears to be a normal rate and rhythm. No pulse, no um, pulsations, no thrills, no lifts. Good, I'm gonna listen to you in this position and then I'll sit you up and lean you forward to listen as well, okay? Um, sorry, the diaphragm. I'm going to the pulmonic. I can hear S1 and S2. S1 and S2. Coming down to herbs point. S1 and S2, moving down to tricuspid. S1 and S2, and down to the mitral. S1 and S2. No extra sounds, no S2, I'm sorry, no S3, no S4, no rubs. And I'm gonna turn and listen for murmurs, starting with pulmonic. Aortic. Herbs point. Good, tricuspid. Good, and um, mitral. A little higher, sorry about that. No murmurs noted. Kathleen, I'm gonna sit you up. Mm. 
Also, while she was laying back, I could tell there was no JVD, no distension. And I'm going to listen one more time in this position here. and herbs point. And um, tricuspid. And last one here, I'll be a lean forward just a little bit. Good, and stay right there. I'm listening for murmurs here. And herbs point. Last time here, and no murmurs, no extra heart sounds, no S3, no S4, no rubs. Um, so, all right, so now we're going to start on the chest and lung exam. external exam um, for chest and lungs. Um, Kathleen's chest appears to be normal size. Her, um, her lateral is two times what her anterior posto is. Good. Um, we've already gone through the trachea. We did those already. So, um, Next, um, Kathleen, I'm going to start with um, the, the back of you. So if you want to swing your legs just over to the side. And I'm going to feel for a couple of things. So um, you'll feel me touch. My hands are warmer now. <laughs> All right. And her skin is warm. Good. No crepitus. Good. Is anything tender anywhere? No. Good. Um, I'm going to have you say 99 a couple of times, okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and say 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. Go ahead. 99. 99. I'm gonna go around to the front, same thing. 99, 99. Good, her fremitus is um, present and bilaterally equal. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> go ahead and take a deep breath. Good, and one more. Good. Thoracic excursion is bilateral. Next, I'm going to um, just start. Um, you're going to feel me kind of knocking on you a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And um, um, if you'll um, cross your arms in front of you, and I'm going to come right over to here. Good. 
and over here. Good. And I'm going to come around to the front and us a couple of spaces here. Are you warm still? Uh-huh. Okay, good. All right, while we're knocking, I'm gonna do one more thing here. Use this pen to help me here to mark. Mm -hmm. I might have you up and I'm not sure. Let's see here. That's going to be right about there. I'm sorry. It's dry erase. So it will come off. <laughs> I'm going to have you take a couple of deep breaths and then on your last one, blow all the way out. Whenever you're ready, let me know. Then get all the air out. Okay, you can breathe. <laughs> you did good. Okay. And I'll just measure here. Um, diaphragm excursion on um, her left is 3.5 and on her right, um, 3.5. So equal bilaterally. Okay, next I'm gonna just listen. Um, from the outside, I don't hear any extra noises and you can just breathe normally for a moment. Big breath in. Okay, more time, breathe in. Same thing. Good. Big breath. Good. Big breath. Are you doing okay on your breathing? Yeah. Did you need a break? Okay. Big breath. Give you a break and then we'll move to the we'll move to the sides. You doing okay? Yeah. Okay. And so I'll have you kind of bring your arms out in front of you. Yeah. And I'm just gonna listen to the sides. I'm just gonna bring it kind of under here. I'm sorry, I don't know if I take goals. Breath. Good. Perfect. Same thing over here. Big breath. Good. 
Good clear to oscillation in the back. I'll give you a moment and then I'll move to the front to let you breathe naturally. While you're doing that, um, I'm just gonna listen and have you say a couple of things, okay? okay. Um, say um, blue balloon. Blue balloon. Is it blue balloon? Blue balloon. Blue balloon. Blue balloon. Blue balloon. Blue balloon. Blue balloon. Alright, and um, you know, hands forward. Yeah, I'm just going to listen to right here. And blue balloon. Good. Local residence is um, equal bilaterally in the back. So now I'm going to take a listen to the front. And take a breath in. Um, clear to auscultation anteriorly. Pain. And do you have any pain when I do this? Nope. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to move my hands like this down your back. Every time I move, can you say 99? Okay, so say. 99, 99, 99, 99. All right. So tactile frontis was equally bilateral and it diminished at the lower lung lobes. So now I'm going to listen to your lung sounds. Every time that I move my stethoscope, you're going to take a deep breath in and out through your mouth, not your nose. Okay. So I'm going to start up here and every time I move, just take a new breath, okay? Sure. Very good. And can I have you lift your right arm and kind of lean over like like this so I can get to your right side and just do the same thing. Take deep breaths. All right. Very good. You can turn around and face me, please. So all of his breath sounds were normal. There was no adventitious lung sounds heard. Um, they all seemed vesicular, so that's a normal finding. Um, I'm going to do the same thing to your front. Every time I turn your back, I'm going to do your front. Sure. So you can do front side. Um, so I'm going to inspect his anterior chest. Again, there's no lesions, no apparent masses, no scars. Again, chest hair, but it's evenly distributed, and his skin is appropriate for his ethnicity. So I'm going to palpate. I don't feel any masses, so now I'm going to do the same thing with the tactile, or the 99 tactile front. Okay. 99, 99, 99. Again. Did that take it? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so again, that was um, equally bilateral, and it was diminished in the lower lung lobes. So again, every time I move the stethoscope, just take a new breath for me.
very good. Again, his lung sound sounded um, vesicular, which is a normal lung sound, and there was no dysphoria or abnormal sounds heard. So the next thing I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you lay down. Um, I'm going to scoot this closer to me so I'm not bending over. So just lay down on these pillows. Oh, I'm pretty sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a jugular vein distension, which means that, no, I need that. I think that could be up farther. I'm sorry. If we were in a hospital bed, this would be 45 degree angle, but we're, we're yeah. So can you turn that way for me? And I'm just going to look for jugular vein distension, which would mean that your jugular veins in your neck would be um, outward and maybe pulsating. And that would mean that you're they're working too hard. They're not delivering the blood effectively from your brain. So I don't feel or see any of that. Can you face me? You're welcome, Miss Beth. All right. So now I'm going to listen to your heart sound. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the um, heart sounds on the diaphragm side, and that's going to just detect the normal heart sounds. So I heard only S1 and S2, which are normal heart sounds, and that's going to be like a large rub of your heart. So now I'm going to turn it to the bell side of my stethoscope, and this is going to detect any abnormal heart sounds or extra heart sounds, or we call them murmurs. So I'm just going to do it backwards. It's kind of weird they put that kid rumor in the holes like that. What did you say? It's kind of weird they put that kid rumor in the holes yeah, like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so I didn't detect any S3 or S4, which would be extra heart sounds, and I didn't hear any murmurs, which is a good finding. This is them. I'm going to be doing your chest. I'm going to start with the posterior chest, your back. So if you don't mind, if you could just turn around for me. So now I'm going to go ahead and assess your back. I'm going to see if we're symmetrical of the shoulders. The shoulders are symmetrical. Spine is aligned, which is good. Um, muscular development looks good. Respiratory characteristics also look normal. I see no dyspnea, which is good. Skin color is normal, no scars or lesions. Skin's intact and appropriate to ethnicity. So now I'm gonna go ahead and feel down your back. Let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness. Okay. No. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, have you take a breath in and out. Okay, thorax suspension is also good. I'm going to go ahead and feel down your back. Just keep saying 99 every time I go down. Okay. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and hit your sides um, slightly. So let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and listen to some um, breath sounds. You can take a breath every time I move my stethoscope. Okay. Okay, good. I'm going to do the same to your side, so if you could just put your hand on top of your head. Okay, I'm going to do the same here. Okay, perfect. Everything seems to be fine. So now I'm going to move on to the um, anterior chest, to so your front. If you don't mind if you could just turn around for yeah. me here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to assess your um, chest. Skin's intact. Skin color is normal, appropriate to ethnicity. No scars or lesions or anything. I don't see any pulsations or heaving, which is good. So now I'm going to go ahead and feel down your chest. Just keep saying 99 for me. Okay. 99, 99, 99, 99, 
Okay, good. Now I'm going to go ahead and listen to some um, bread sounds. Okay. Get it breath in and out. Good. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to listen to some hard sounds. Okay. Okay, perfect. No murmurs or anything of that sort, so that is good. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go also go ahead and feel for your PMI, point of maximum impulse. Okay, okay present about a plus two. I'm just going to take a look at your lungs. So first I'm just going to inspect um, your anterior thorax. So everything looks good. Um, it looks very symmetrical and um, has appropriate structure, shape, and size. Um, so in your skin, so I'm just going to move my hair back to look at your skin. So your skin color uh, is the appropriate flesh tone and uh, the temperature feels warm, which is good. Your moisture, it seems appropriately moist. Um, your skin trigger, so I'm just gonna pinch your skin real fast. Good, so skin trigger is good. That means you're well hydrated. Um, and then your texture is smooth and you're negative for any lesions. Um, and everything looks symmetrical. So now I'm gonna pal palpate your clavicles. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, your clavicles are a good level and they're symmetrical. Um, and now I'm just going to palpate your sternum. I'm going to start from the sternal notch and go all the way down through your xiphoid process. Just make sure your sternum is straight and strong. Okay, good. Everything's symmetrical. Um, and... Now I'm just gonna put my hands on your shoulders. I'm gonna have you shrug up for me. Okay, good. So there's good strength in your shoulders. And now I'm gonna test your respiratory excursion. So I'm gonna have you turn your head to the side and then I'm just gonna put my hands right under your chest and you can come, you can come around the side to see this. And I'm gonna have you take a big deep breath in and then let it out. Okay, good. So your respiratory excursion was good. Um, it was symmetrical and deep. And now I'm just going to listen to the front of your lungs. So um, I'm just going to have you take deep breaths for me, but no quicker than normal. Um, and then I'm going to have you turn your head to the side. Okay, okay can you turn your head to the side? Which and side? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Okay. And then just take deep breaths, but no quicker than you usually do. Okay, good. So everything sounded good. There's vesicular breath sounds heard throughout, um, which is good. And so your rate was consistent with your uh, vital signs. Your rhythm was regular. The depth was deep. Um, your effort was non-labored. And you didn't hear any use of accessories, so negative use of accessories. And there were no um, extra lung sounds or adventitious breath sounds. Um, so... Now I'm gonna take a look at your back. So if you could just turn this way, just so your back is facing the camera. Okay, and I'm just gonna have you pull your hair inside. Are you, do you mind just putting it up? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna inspect your posterior thorax. So 
the size and shape of it all seem appropriate. Um, you seem nice and symmetrical. Um, first, I'm just going to palpate your, uh, your spine. Or, or sorry, I'm, first I'm going to palpate the scapulae. So, just going to go here. Okay, good. And now I'm gonna palpate your spine. I'm gonna go down each vertebrae. Um, this is just to check for any scoliosis. Just going down each vertebrae. Good. Okay, so your spine is really straight, um, negative for any scoliosis. You, um, yeah. And was there any pain when I was palpating that at all? No. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to do the respiratory excursion again. So I'm going to move my hands right here, and then will you take a deep breath? Let it out. Okay, good. So your respiratory excursion was symmetrical and deep, um, which is good. It's just like the front. And now I'm just going to look at your S curvature. So I'm just going to make sure you have appropriate S curvature of your back, which you do. Um, and then now I'm going to check your, um, your AP diameter. So your AP diameter should be half the diameter of your transverse thorax. So I'm going to go from the front and take it to the back. And it's exactly half, um, which is good. So that means you have no uh, barrel chesting. So now I'm going to listen to the back of your lungs. Okay, so I'm going to just ask you to give yourself like a little hug kind of. And then um, just take deep breaths again, but no quicker than you usually do. Okay, everything was good. Um, so just like the front, your rate was consistent with your vital signs. Um, your rhythm was regular. Your depth was deep because I was asking you to take deep breaths. Um, your effort was non-labored. And then I, it was negative for any um, adventitious breath sounds or, um, uh, yeah, no um, adventitious breath sounds. Oh, and no use of accessories. Okay, so now I'm going to listen to your heart. So I'm going to have you lie down just on your back. Can you put your head this way, please? Um, so first I am just going to... Okay, so first I'm just going to look at your chest sideways and just breathe normally. So I'm looking for any heaves or lifts, um, which would be a sign of an enlarged heart. And I don't see any, I'm not seeing any pulsations or anything, so that's good. So now I am going to um, palpate. So I'm gonna go from your sternal notch to the angle of Louis to your second rib, second rib and center, second intercostal space. So this is where the um, aortic site is. So I don't feel any. I don't feel any pulsations. Negative for thrills as well. And I'm gonna go to pulmonic. No pulsations. Also negative for thrills. Um, herbs point. No pulsations. Negative for thrills. And then um, tricuspid in the fourth intercostal space. No pulsations. Negative for thrills. And then also in the fifth intercostal space. For tricuspid again. So no pulsations and negative for thrills, and then um, mitral, 
in your fifth intercostal space mid corticulum. So I do feel a pulsation here, but that's normal because that's where um, the apex of the heart is and that's where the point of maximal impulse should be. So I feel pulsations there, but that's totally normal. Um, so now I am just gonna look at, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna listen to your heart now. I'm starting at aortic. Pulmonic. Herbs point. And tricuspid. And then a baby take a baby step. And another baby step. And go to the mitral. I'm going to baby step back, baby step back, into tricuspid, herbs point, pulmonic, and then aortic again. Okay, so that all sounded good. Um, so... Your rate was regular and consistent with your vital signs. Um, the rhythm was regular, the intensity is strong, and um, your diameter and duration are both appropriate as well. Um, so now, and also your um, S1 was louder. There was appropriate relationship of S1 and S2. So S1 was louder at the mitral site and S2 was louder at the aortic site, which is exactly how you want it to be. Um, and there was negative for any um, high pitch sounds or extra heart sounds or murmurs or clicks. Um, and yeah, appropriate relationship S1 and S2. So now I'm gonna listen on the bell side of the stethoscope to um, listen to see if there's any low pitch extra heart sounds. Okay, so aortic, sorry. Okay, aortic. Pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and baby step, baby step, mitral. Okay, that sounded good. So I didn't hear any extra um, heart sounds, no low, low pitched heart sounds. Freeze one at a time bilaterally that are two plus. And I'm going to also auscultate for any brewies, which are not present. I'm then going to move to the posterior chest, looking for any deformities, looking for symmetry, I'm looking for any signs of respiratory distress, such as use of um, accessory muscles, tripod positioning, nasal flaring, no cyanosis, tachypnea, or to retractions. I'm first going to start by assessing for symmetric chest expansion, just breathe in and out, perfect, as well as symmetric tactile firmitis, if you could say 99. 99. And again, 99. Perfect. I'm going to percuss in the intercostal spaces. And then auscultate as well, making sure to get the lateral lung fills. Just getting your slats. Perfect. I'm then going to test for agophony by just having you say E. E. And then bronchophony, just say 99 when you feel it. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, And whisper brectally, just whisper in one, two, three when you feel it. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
perfect. And then going to move to your anterior chest. Again, just assessing for symmetry and any deformities. I'm going to test for symmetric chest expansion. Just breathe in and out. And tactile firmatitis, say 99. 99. And then I'm going to auscultate for any adventitious breath sounds. Just take a breath. Perfect. And then going to let you lay down with your head at a 30 to 45 degree angle. And I'm first just going to assess, let's turn your head each way, assessing for any JVD, which I do not see present. I'm assessing for jugular pulsation, inspecting for any heaves or lifts. I'm going to, sorry, I forgot. I'm gonna let you sit up, sorry. And I'm going to assess, auscultate your heart sounds with both the bell and the diaphragm. So I'm listening to the aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral, and with the bell, aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral, and also finding and palpating the PMI, and then listening in that area for one full minute to get the rate and the rhythm, which is regular, and a heart rate of 70. Now I'm gonna have you lay down again. And I've already assessed for the jugular pulsation and the JVD, any heaves or lifts. I'm then going to palpate in all the fields for any thrills and the aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral. And again, listening with both the bell and the diaphragm, aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral, aortic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and